So um, I feel really welcomed here because it's my, uh, I say it's my mother church and also my mother-in-law church because my wife grew up in this church. So every time when I come, I see many familiar faces and some new faces too. When Minter was there playing piano, I was so touched. And also I feel immediately at home because this is the young man I've always uh, uh, co-worked with when I was here. Yes, many, like a band, I, the many of the young people here um, I worked with. So this is my home church. When I, whenever I come back, I feel at home. So today I uh, will speak in English. So my English have accent, my Chinese have accent. <laughs> so, <laughs> now I am serving in Vancouver among a Chinese community. My English is, uh, I don't know, it's getting worse or getting better. But uh, here I can always feel free because it's my home. So um, I believe you can understand. If you cannot understand, you feel, believe that the Lord can make you understand. <laughs> so um, first of all, I'm very, very grateful to the Lord for this church. Today I'm going to talk on the topic of two generations working together. So when I think about this topic, I think about this church, I think about Pastor Philip and uh, Shimu. I, <laughs> what's her English name? Anyway, Do Doris, yes. And uh, they are my spiritual parents. They are my spiritual parents. And uh, I'm very, very grateful along the, uh, these 20 years of serving the Lord. More and more I found it's very important for two generations to work together and for the younger ones to honor the older generations, especially. I'm not sure I'm a younger generation or old generation, I'm middle. <laughs> so people uh, say we are generation X because I'm 47 right now, so generation X. We try to find our identities. Why X? Because X is unknown number most of the time. So we tried to find our identity to define us who we are. I believe the young people also, we try to define who we are. How to define who we are is very much related to our relationship with our parents, our parents' generation, and also our next generation. Anyway, come to uh, two passages, read some scriptures, and then we uh, come to some testimonies. And uh, along the way, I will uh, use my testimony to testify the word of God like Revelation 12 said, that our testimony is to testify the word of God. It's alive, it's powerful. So first is uh, Malachi chapter four, verse five. It's the very last word, uh, verse in the Old Testament. Five and six. If, we, if you have attended to Malachi chapter four, we can read together. Uh, verse 5 says, See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day the Lord comes. He will return the hearts of the father to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. The verse, it also means why there's a curse on the land because the father's heart is away from the children and the children's heart are away from the fathers. Father, of course, including mother, including mothers. But especially father, when the father's hearts are turning away from the children, there will be a curse on the land. When we open our eyes and look in the west, in the east, you know, no matter in the Western world or the Eastern world, we see there's a trend that the father's heart is turning away from the children, and the children's hearts are turning away from the father's generation. And we see many things are happening which is not what we wanted. It's not what we expect. It's very painful. It's very painful. 
Many in crime, many in children lost, have no directions, drugs, alcohol, many things, including human traffic, all these things. Why? Because the two generations are separated. You know, I'm very grateful for my English, though broken, to my father. Because I, I, here I need to say, thank you, Lord, for my father, because he forced me to learn English. I remember when I was in China, in the middle school, the, at that time there's middle school and there's high school. And uh, I grew up in the countryside, and my dad had ambition, wanted me to go to the best high school and the best university in China. So he uh, changed my school to one of the best in the city. So uh, when I went to that school, my English is zero. My math and everything else is very good, but English is zero. I only knew one word, which is I, because that's uh, how it sounds, <laughs> and it's me, that's I. I know I, what I means. <laughs> the rest, I don't know what it means. When I read the book, I just get uh, so depressed, depressed, discouraged. Every time I turn the book, boy, I don't know any of the stuff. From the beginning to the end, I said, Dad, I want to give up. I do not go to university. I want to go to college and to learn a trade. That's it. I couldn't go to a university, but my father, he just looked around riding his bicycles to find a tutor for me. Those days, there was no tutor. In the late 70s and early 80s, there was no tutor. And uh, no such a profession. I'm, I'm doing tutor right now still as a pastor, but I'm also part-time doing tutoring job because my prof uh, you know, I was in the scientific field for many years, math and physics. Uh, um, relatively easy for me. So uh, I still uh, make good income from that. So those days there was no, no tutor. So my dad ride a bicycle here and there to find a tutor for me. He always encouraged me, he said, son, you deserve to go to university. You are a good student. You are smart. You are diligent. You know, as a Chinese father, he's not uh, uh, it's an ordinary Chinese father, uh, very loving, but no, not showing much of the affection. But from his words, his action, he shows so much love. Determination, the son, you deserve better. So then uh, he found a tutor for me, but I never went to that tutor because uh, I couldn't find him. <laughs> Those days the tutors are not paid, you know, by relationship, as a friendship. They said, oh, I can tutor your son. But I never, could, never was able to find him. So I said, Dad, I couldn't find the tutor at all. I, when I, uh, I knock on the door, he's not there. So, <laughs> you know, those days there's no telephone or anything. I just go to knock on the door, and he's not there. Probably it's the wrong time. So I said, Dad, I want to give up. So my dad says, no, son, you couldn't give up. So he found two textbooks. You know, that's uh, English first year and the second year. He said, in the summer, for one month, two months, I forgot. He said, son, you can learn it by yourself. <laughs> okay. So I started learning English by myself. I didn't have a tape recorder or anything. I just look at those pictures. Oh, this is a Chinese R. Uh. I didn't know the English have difference like a cat, cut, and a cart. I didn't know. I just, everything is cut. <laughs> okay. So I developed this very interesting accent. It's a very Chinese accent. But uh, after that summer, second year, I went back to the high school. My English was, uh, I was able to catch up. And uh, at the end of the high school, I, uh, my English is number one in the whole class. And in the university, my English actually is pretty high. And I wrote my PhD thesis, of course, totally in English, you know, a few hundred pages, everything in English. So I can stand here in Canada to preach here and to do whatever right now I can do is because of my father. I'm very grateful because he 
made such effort to get me educated. So the two generations together. So I always miss my father. He's in China. He's very healthy. My brother is with him. I'm always grateful to my brother, I said, because brother, you did my portion. You know, you did my portion. Xiao Jing, Chinese Xiao Jing. My brother-in-law and a sister, as you know, said, uh, I say, you know, dad's inheritance is, is yours. <laughs> it's yours because you did a double portion. Later on, I will talk about inheritance in the natural and in the spiritual. There's a spiritual inheritance which can be passed on from the older generation. When we children honor the father, when the father's hearts tend to the children. Let's read another passage in Genesis. And then we'll, I will share some of my understanding and testimonies. Genesis chapter 9. Chapter 9, uh, 20 to 28. We'll read the first. Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When, the, uh, when he drank some of the wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders. Then they walked in backward and covered their father's nakedness. Their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him. He said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves. Will he, be to his uh, will he be to his brothers? He also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend the territory of Japheth. May Japheth live in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his slave. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. Altogether, Noah lived 950 years, and then he died. The background of uh, this passage is that um, uh, Noah, after the flood, God made a covenant with him with rainbow. Basically, he said, I will bless you and bless every living thing on the earth with this uh, rainbow sign to say that I will never destroy the land with flood again. And uh, you are going to multiply and uh, land. After that, Noah became a uh, farmer. And he, you know, uh, he cultivated uh, some uh, vineyard and then made some wine. Now this passage is a very simple story. <clears throat> but they are very deep spiritual meaning and uh, lessons for life to draw. As I said, along the years when I was serving the Lord, I found <clears throat> it's extremely, extre extremely important for the sons to honor the fathers and for the fathers to bless the sons and the daughters. When I say sons, it means sons and daughters. <laughs> I do not exclude the female. Actually, in the Bible, the sons, in, uh, including, you know, whatever spring, the whole called the, the one who take inheritance, especially in Greek, in the New Testament, they use a word called we us. In Galatians, it says, no matter a slave or master or a woman or man, they are all we us. They are all. We are all. Uh, here, heirs of the Lord. Basically, we have an inheritance. It's talking about inheritance. So in Christ, no matter we're men or women, we are all sons of God in Christ. So when I say sons, it means sons and daughters. <clears throat> now here, the story says, Noah was a farmer and got drunk. 
and he lie there naked. You know, sometimes nakedness may mean spiritually some of the things which is not very decent, you know. Now, Noah was said to be a righteous man in those days. God counted him as a righteous man. But he's not perfect. He's not Christ. He's not perfect. As any of us Christians, we are in Christ, but we are not perfect. But Noah did something which here exposed his nakedness. He was drunk. And then he let uncovered in his tent. Now here I will talk about Ham. Ham did something really, really wrong, which drew a curse upon him and his children, Canaan. Those days, the people are very interesting. When they, when they are married to their son, they curse their granddaughter, grandchildren. <laughs> because the son is their own, and the grandchildren is their sons. Okay, I curse your son. <laughs> okay. You are my son, I don't curse you, but I, I curse your son, you know? But what happened is uh, his son is going to be very sad you know, because his son is cursed. Noah here, he didn't curse Ham, but he cursed Ham's son, Canaan, <laughs> you know. If you uh, search the uh, history and the uh, ge uh, geology, you will find Ham's descendants are the descendants of uh, uh, Canaan. That's uh, where the Israelites invaded in the, most of the Old Testament, and also part of uh, Africa, Egypt, Ethiopia, those countries. And Japheth is considered to be the fathers of the white people, mostly the white people. And Shem is the father of uh, the Eastern ones, including uh, Israelites, Abraham's children, and even Chinese. So basically, it's like that. So now, Obviously, the hands children was uh, in the history many, many years was something that seems uh, there's a curse on it because it's related to Noah. You may not agree, but uh, you believe, you need to believe. These people who are serving God, they have a spiritual authority. This is called authority. Authority is that when they speak, something is going to happen. Good things are going to happen. If they speak bad things, bad things are going to happen. I, I believe you believe this, you know. In the United States, if George Bush says, let's go to invade Iraq, things happen. Is that right? When in China, Hu Jintao says something, something is going to happen. Because those people are in a position of authority. Authority causes power. Power causes things to happen, good or bad. Now here Noah, as a man of God, in his weakness, he didn't like what his uh, younger son did. He cursed him, his grandson. So, he, of course, we say, theoretically, we said, oh, he's a man of God. He shouldn't do that. But he did it. <laughs> but he did it. Now, what I want to say, that sometimes when we come to church, we said, yeah, you're supposed to do good because you are Christian for 20 years. Is that right? You are pastor. <laughs> you are leading the worship. You're supposed to behave much better than me. Yes, it's true. But in his weakness, he did something wrong. Because on this earth, we are still need to be perfected. We need to admit that. This is reality. We need to live. So Noah cursed his youngest son. Now, this is a lesson we need to know spiritually or in our natural family. First, as the sons and the daughters, we always need to honor our father and the mothers. We need to do honoring. Honoring including, mainly here, is a lesson for covering. 
covering. The other two sons did something very uh, touched Noah's heart very much. The two sons take a covering and then walk backward, you know, walk backward. They didn't want to see their father's nakedness. They didn't even want to know about They covered him. When Noah wake up, he was so comforted by these two sons. But he heard of what the other son did, the youngest son did. He was very angry because he exposed his shame telling other people, other brothers, you see, father is naked. He's lying there, not covered at all. He's drunk. So as younger ones, I still consider my, uh, myself to be a young man. <laughs> I never wanted to get old, but sometimes the people call me a spiritual father. I said, oh, are you sure? <laughs> so as a young man, I learned the lessons in my natural family and my spiritual family. I know it's very important to cover our fathers. Our fathers are not perfect. This is a, we all know that, mothers, our pastors are not perfect, but when we learn to cover, the Father's heart is comforted. He will bless us. Every one of us will come to that stage. One day, we find we are weak. You know, we need other people's help. Instead of being pointing fingers on, you know. I'm 47, but sometimes I feel weak, my legs are weak, my mind is getting slow. I used to have a very sharp mind. You know, I'm not that young anymore. The young people, when they say, Pastor Bing, you know, let me help you, I will do it with you, okay? But any people if say, you know, how come you're so slow? <laughs> I feel, I do not feel good, honestly. I always try to overcome myself, to always forgive, always uh, understand other people. But I never get uh, really pleased if other people comment on me negatively. You know, I, I believe I'm a man of God. I always pray and forgive and bless other people. And, uh, but uh, I never get pleasure when people comment on me negatively. <laughs> you know, it doesn't give me any strength. And it doesn't, doesn't give me any encouragement. So as a young man, I learned I need to cover my father's mothers all the way, all the time. You know, naturally speaking, my father, I see our children honor him. We have a, uh, my father have a few children. Some honor him more, some honor him less. But the ones who honor him more, definitely more blessed. I also saw in many people's families, some people, they always want to get something from the father, but their heart is not for the father. They always want to get, uh, get the wallet, <laughs> get the money, <laughs> but their hearts are not uh, to the father. But at the same time, some other children, they're not after the money, but they always look after the father. And later on, the father gave the inheritance to whom? To the one who looked after the father. You know, not the one who always wanted the wallet. As a spiritual children, the same thing. For our heavenly father, we all know we need money. We all know we need blessing, for sure, from the Lord. But the Lord, as a father, is very pleased when we, our hearts are turned to him, to bless him by serving him, loving him, serving others, other children of God. And his heart is so pleased, and then he will bless us. That's his uh, principle. He said, seek ye the kingdom and your righteousness first, and everything added, uh, else is going to be added to you. That's what it means. And uh, even naturally speaking, our pastors, 
stand for God here as a father, or the, our older ones, elders in the church, they are fathers. And they always want to bless us. But when we, our hearts, want to bless them, we will see there's a spiritual inheritance. Spiritual inheritance, when I talk about this word, actually it's a real inheritance. I don't like to use a spiritual or natural. It's like for God, everything is useful. Everything is from God. If we use it properly, and if we bring to the submission of Christ, everything is spiritual. Even your money is spiritual. If you bring that to the submission of Christ, it's spiritual. So the blessings, no matter natural or spiritual, is from the Lord. Because the earth is from the Lord. The heaven is the Lord's. So Lord wants to bless us with everything, everything in the heaven and on earth. But the principle, if we know and we obey, and we will get it. Now, I just give you an example from my life. I found that when I honor the spiritual fathers and the mothers, and I'm really, really blessed. My path is much smoother. Sorry, Pastor Philip, when are we going to? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> uh, so now, I'll give you one example. When I was, uh, before I became pastor, I was leading a home group in Zion Church. There were times I wanted to uh, really run away from the Zion Church. The reason is uh, the vision in Zion Church is not, it seems far from my vision. My vision is evangelism. But Church of Zion has a vision for the kingdom and prayer for Germany and Taiwan. I said, you know, Germany has nothing to do with me as a Chinese, you know. <laughs> I love to evangelize Chinese. Just give me an opportunity or position to evangelize Chinese. But uh, make the long story short, uh, the Lord wanted me to stay in that church faithfully, be faithful on the small things. I did. And later on I learned I need to work with the fathers. I want to obey them, obey them, to submit to them. I was not a person to submit, tell you the truth. <laughs> I was not. I always said, oh, you know, pastor is not preaching as good as I am. <laughs> I preach much better than the pastors. Oh, I have more degrees than the pastors. I have a PhD in physics, a master's in divinity, and uh, I was in France for many, some years, America many years, Canada many years. When I was 19 years old, I, was, uh, I went to travel all through China. <laughs> you know? I, just, I, I was not a person to submit, but along the years, the Lord taught me many lessons. If you want, to be blessed, you want spiritual authority. Submission is very important. Why? Because Lord Jesus, Bible said, because of his obedience, his obedience, then he, Lord uh, Father, gave him the spiritual authority. That's a cross. You know, he had the image of God, but he's not, he didn't grasp that. So I made up my mind. I said, you know, I will stay in this church. I will stay in this church. So later on, our Mandarin group become bigger and bigger, so we cannot hold the people. We said we need to start a Mandarin service because uh, our mother church is uh, Cantonese and English. So we prayed with uh, our fathers, pastors. The, the first time the pastor said, no, it's not the time we submit because our pastor says it's not the time we submit. And later on, we pray together. They said, it is the time you start a Mandarin service. So we started. So I remember the day when I was commissioned. Me and my wife was commissioned on the stage. It's a theater. It's very tall uh, and, you know, platform. And uh, our pastors, all the pastors, we have quite a few pastors commissioned us. And Pastor Gideon Chu, the senior pastor, said something. He said, this is a, a being one, your pastor. Your pastor, everybody look at him, your pastor. And uh, 
I trust him 100%. So now every time when I come to the mother church, uh, many meetings are still together. I feel blessed. All the old ones, younger ones, they bless me. They always pray for me. As if I, you know, just one of them. We have a lot of intercessors, prayer warriors in our church, very seasoned. They have fought many, many wars worldwide. They pray for me. They pray for me. I remember once there was two, uh, twice uh, the uh, prophetic people from other places come to our church, the Chinese congregation. They said, I saw a vision. Your church is so protected. The people in our church is very difficult. You know, some of the people, they had marriage problems and many young people from China. Very difficult, naturally, to pastor. But we found they all submit. I don't know why they submit. They don't separate what's behind me or anything, you know? They're very emotional people, but they, 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 when they come in, they, they quickly submit. I didn't know why, but uh, those prophets said, because I see a very thick wall is protecting you, twice. Why? I say, I know, because my mother church, a lot of intercessors are praying for us. Our senior pastors has authority. They also pray for us, cover us. You know, that's the truth. I also, when I was commissioned, I told the, the whole congregation in Church of Zion, the old ones and the young ones, you know, I will share the suffering with the Church of Zion. I will share the authority with Church of Zion. I bear the shame of Church of Zion. I share the fame of Church of Zion. Church of Zion is now greatly used by the Lord in China and many places doing great work. But those days, five, six years ago, actually the name in Vancouver in, among Chinese church was not good, Church of Zion. Mo a lot of churches thought our church is a cult because we do weird stuff. Weird basically is not conventional because we do a lot of things uh, here, there, Canada, uh, you know, with Stephen Harper, and uh, with Israel. So people didn't understand. Even when I started the church, Chinese church, and some people said, you change the name. Don't use the church, church of Zion name. Because this name among Chinese church is not good. I said, no. I bear the shame of my fathers. I share the fame of the fathers. So I said, no, I'm not going to change. Some people said, you know, uh, this or that. Now, even now, we uh, offering everything is together. I always give back to the ch mother church because a lot, they support a lot of missionaries. So now I see, uh, literally, I'm sharing the authority of Church of Zion. When I come here, Church of Zion, now the intercessor is praying for me because we have a vision to bless the churches on the whole earth. Now they are praying for us, for me, to bless this Alliance Church. That's a story I just want to share. I'm very, very blessed. I see the path is paved by the fathers. You know, my journey is much easier. I know I need to suffer with Christ because the Bible said so. But I don't want to invite suffering, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Because time is short. We don't want to waste our time circling in the wilderness and suffering for no reason. Be smart. Be smart. That's, a, you know, the, my word is for, especially for young people. Walk with the fathers. They have a lot of good stuff to deposit to our life. Walk with the fathers. Of course, fathers also walk with the children. Father's heart needs to be turned first to the children. The Bible said, fathers to the children first, then children to fathers second. We have no time to develop this today, but we will, uh, I, in my whole heart, I want to pray and bless this church, my mother church. The fathers will work with the young people because the young people, the path is not easy. Even my children, my son told me, 
So that I'm a Canadian, you are Chinese. <laughs> because we wanted him to learn Chinese so much. And you know, they are struggling with their identity. A lot of pressure from, in this world, among the young people, being a Christian is not easy. Sorry, not easy. Being a Chinese and also Canadian is not easy. You want to inherit the Western culture and the Eastern culture, it's not easy. Sometimes become such a burden. We need, they need the Father's understanding and it's fully, full support and the encouragement to walk alongside. You know, walk alongside. Say, son, you can make it. I'm with you. I will not send you out alone to face the society. I'm walking with you. I'm fully behind you. We face anything in the society, I'm behind you. I'm with you. But the sons, also with the fathers. The other day I was really touched by Pastor Gideon uh, chose uh, son, Caleb. Oh, he's also a young pastor. He was preaching in a church. I was with him about two, two generations walking together. He said, when I saw my father getting older and older, and I said, you know, I will carry his dreams. I will not walk along myself. As a young man, if I have a vision, but my father's dream is not fulfilled, that's not me. I don't want to leave my father behind. Because Pastor Gideon always says, son, I'm getting old. He also tells us uh, spiritual sons, well, I'm getting old. He travels a lot, almost uh, uh, Ninety percent of the time, he's not at home. He's in Malaysia, China, different places. We couldn't find him. He's our senior pastor. We couldn't find him. You know, in China, take a train. You know, sometimes a lot of things happen. His hair getting gray, white. But he says, "Son, I'm getting old. You are going to carry my baton. I'm getting old." But Caleb said, no, Dad, I'm going to carry you. You know, I'm going to carry you to see your vision and the dream is fulfilled. I, as a spiritual son, same thing. I always tell Pastor Gideon, you know, we are going to work together. With Caleb, his son, many younger ones, we are very united, I said, you know. We will carry the father's dreams. Far, the old man dream dreams, the younger man see visions, but we are going to do together. Maybe we bow our heads to pray. We can stand up. Our Heavenly Father, I know this is a message you wanted me to deliver because it's from your heart. You as a father, you want to see your children be blessed because you have turned your heart to us through Jesus Christ with full blessing. There's no any curse on the cross because the cross has taken away the, all the curses. Noah as a man, righteous man, but he's not perfect. He cursed his sons. But you come to this earth as a perfect son. You reverse that curse. Lord, here I just pray and bring and, uh, uh, the, the, the inheritance you've given. You have passed on through many generations to Church of Zion, the two generations walking together to this church. I bless this church. I, with Pastor Gideon, Pastor Bob Birch, and with all the inheritance of Church of Zion, I bless this church. The two generations are going to walk together. The father's hearts are going to turn to the sons, no matter spiritually or physically. And the son's hearts are going to fully turn to the fathers. And we can do different things, but our hearts are going to be turned to each other, bless each other, fully for each other, never be against each other. Lord, let's pray. You remove any walls between two generations. Amen. Remove any walls between two generations because that wall is destroyed on the cross by Jesus Christ. Lord, we say your full blessings come. 
come in Jesus' name to bless this church from the old ones to the younger ones. That any, any curses, any uh, things which is uh, negative from the past right now, Lord, you just uh, heal. That your healing power will come. Come to heal. Uh, take uh, one or two minutes. You bring those things. If you are against your sons or daughters, uh, sons and daughters, you are against your father, you said, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to fully forgive. I want to fully bless my father. I want to fully bless my, bless my daughter, bless my son. Right now, you take one minute to pray that. Pray out. There's no any cursing attitude, no any motives of cursing. Just full blessing with a heart, with an action. We fully bless each other. Lord, I just thank you. Because that's your determination for this church. Because this church had a long time cry. Pastor Philip's cry for the fathers to walk with the sons and the sons with the, uh, the, uh, the fathers. I see on this stage this young man and a woman, they, they uh, sing the sons with such confidence and also such longing, longing, longing to walk a spiritual walk. Lord, I just uh, f- you know, pray a full blessing for two generations to walk together. Not just by knowledge, but in action, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pass the time to Pastor Philip. They Lord, stand up, we are singing, sing the hymn. He is Lord, He is Lord. We turn our hearts to the Lord. And the Lord's healing power among us. Yes.